Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky warned that a lack of support for Ukraine would be a big win for Putin and a loss for the West, as he was asked to speculate on the outcome of the upcoming U.S. presidential election. Zelensky was asked about speculation that U.S. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump would withdraw aid to Ukraine if elected but Zelensky appeared to be unaware of the comments. However Zelensky emphasized that Ukraine would be relying on bipartisan support. Risks are risks. That's why Ukraine has its own interim plan, how to strengthen itself. It will be very difficult. But don't forget, Europe also is Europe, he added. Zelensky also commented on the presence of North Korean troops in Russia, saying that he expected there to be up to 12,000 in total arriving soon. Thousands of North Korean soldiers are expected to reinforce Russian troops on the front line in Ukraine and are pushing the almost three-year war beyond the borders of the warring parties. Zelensky described it as a escalation. Western leaders warn that its involvement in a European war could also unsettle relations in the Indo-Pacific region, including Japan and Australia. Really and financially to Ukraine if the United States fails to do so. I didn't hear that he said that he will uh, cancel and will not support uh, Ukraine, but uh, of course we don't know who will be the president, but of course we understand all the risks, what can be. The, the biggest risks if the policy of the United States will change. And between us, I don't know who will be the president, it sometimes doesn't depend only on the president's will. I think we have to uh, count on bipartisan support on Congress, first of all, and that's why it will be, I think, not to, not to support Ukraine, I think it's, it will be big win of Putin and big loss of West, of, of unity, of democracy and freedom. That's why I'm not sure that President Trump, if he will be the president, yeah, that he want to be really, that he want to lose. And I think that's that's mean not to to help Ukraine. But anyway, I agree with you that risks are risks. That's why Ukraine has its own interior plan how to strengthen itself. It will be very difficult. But don't forget, Europe also is Europe. I can add on to that, saying that both with a one or two very well known about um, Russia getting support from, let's say, countries that haven't taken a clear stand. First of all, about North Korean soldiers, soldiers and officers, they have both. They have both already on Russian territory. And they will use it both. They will use it on our territory. 3,000 already on the territory of Russia, 3,000 of North Korean soldiers. We think the information from our intelligence, uh, we think that they will have 12,000. This soon, I mean soon, it's not about years or months, it's soon. So that is the first. Uh, of course, it's escalation and uh, how we can, uh, sometimes I'm very surprised how, how our big partners, big strategic partners say that we should not cross red lines and escalate, but we think that Russia uh, does it itself. So have a safe trip home. Thank you so much. In the two and a half years of the war against Ukraine, the Russian army has turned into a criminal group. The armed forces have been disintegrated. Russian Z-War correspondent and propagandist Maxim Kalashnikov spoke about this. He particularly harshly criticized the command of the Russian armed forces and the officer corps, who consider ordinary soldiers slaves and can even send them to execution. The guys are afraid to talk on camera. Why? I encountered the fact that they are afraid of zeroing out. 
One told me, I can't talk because then the commander will send me into an attack with one sapper shovel. The criminalization of the command staff has occurred. The army is simply disintegrating, rapidly disintegrating. There is practically no military justice. They have turned into slave owners. Kalashnikov said he also mentioned cases of looting by Russian soldiers and an acute shortage of manpower. There is a severe shortage of people. For the first time, I saw a regiment of the strategic missile forces, missile men recruited into the infantry. It is obvious that they are already scraping the bottom of the barrel. I look at our armed forces and this is some kind of monstrous degradation. All that bravura that we are the second force in the world. Damn, behind this virtual picture, there has been a rollback. I will tell you that tactical nuclear weapons will not save. Troops are so rarely stationed. The fields are littered with mines and other things placed remotely. Well, they will strike with tactics, some 10 kilotons, and they will not even destroy companies. And no one will go for a massive use of tactical nuclear weapons. They were unable to carry out a quick blitzkrieg, and a protracted war is always terrible and unprofitable. It destroys a nation. Well, now a crisis is inevitable, complained the Z War correspondent. He says North Korean soldiers arriving in Russia will be useless on the battlefield. Russians should not place great hopes on them. He believes that the use of North Korean troops in the war is a bluff. I understand what our government is trying to portray. I will not go to a new mobilization. I'd rather hire Koreans. It's a bluff. Of course, Moscow can send Pyongyang several tons of grain for this. Oil products. To replace the mobilization, you need at least 100,000 to create strike forces and break through the front. And then you start thinking, they haven't had combat experience for 70 years. Yes, they have polished, ironed uniforms, they march beautifully, but they cannot be mixed with our veterans. They do not understand Russian. So, they need to be gathered into separate Korean units. These units are unseasoned, inexperienced. They will become a weak point of defense. The Ukrainian armed forces can strike there. They are also fighting in a foreign country. The motivation is not right. And how can we organize interaction with our units, given that the Korean officers do not know Russian either, Kalashnikov said.